how did the Nasserite industrialization policy manage to delink from colonial powers? And, and how did it maintain this sovereignty from colonialism? So first of all, the, the experience heavily, heavily focused on uh, self-sufficiency and self-reliance. Uh, so you find a lot of it is geared towards uh, increasing the domestic production ratio as proportionate to the domestic supply and consumption. You also find a lot of it is focused on increasing the, in, uh, the domestic ratio uh, within the intermediate consumption for industries. Uh, and you see uh, what, we can, what we can call partial successes uh, in these areas. So, uh, you see uh, the domestic production ratio rising from 70% to almost 80% uh, within that decade and a half of the experience, which is an impressive feat, but still not enough to completely de-link and completely be self-sufficient. Uh, perhaps the prob uh, what emerges as a problem here is that com complete self-sufficiency can end up being a red herring for a lot of countries. It's not easily achievable, uh, and for some, it can be almost impossible to achieve. So a country like Egypt, where a lot of the resources just flat out don't exist within the country, natural resources, lower, uh, lowering the dependence on, uh, on foreign markets and foreign supply is going to be almost impossible. Uh, on the second front, you see Egypt is actively defying the, the World Bank and actively defying the IMF and the US, even though that cost uh, the Nasserite experience uh, uh, a lot in terms of uh, access to finance that ended up uh, translating into hindering industrial production. But that's the price to pay for sovereignty. It's, it's a trade-off that you have to be willing to make. It can be seen easily as the last, uh, the last serious attempt made by an Egyptian or a post-colonial Egyptian, the, by the post-colonial Egyptian government against imperialism, and it will be an exaggeration if we said that it succeeded completely because it didn't. Simply, mm -hmm. as we can see by the turnover that happened starting from the 70s, so it was an attempt, a serious attempt, but certainly it, I wouldn't call it successful because it couldn't sustain itself for a long time. It failed like in up 14 years after it started. Even if it's just a good attempt at delinking from colonization, wasn't it a success in achieving development, at least temporarily? It did, definitely. Like Nasser initiated a, the, a whole capitalist development process. Like if we compare where Egypt were before Nasser and where it became after him, definitely like it's a, his development succeeded. We can see that in like the public health, the new public health system, the new education system, uh, even inside the in the, like inside the industrialization program itself, like with the minimum wages and uh, introducing female labor. All of this it, like was successful, but uh, it wasn't like as I said, it would be an exager exaggeration if we said that this was a complete success, but. In terms of development, definitely, it initiated development and it was revolutionary from that angle. Do you want to add something on the developmental aspect of the Nasserite uh, industrial policy? Yeah, as I would say that, again, it's a partial success. So it ends up initiating massive developments, doubli doubling the average wage at the highest increase in minimum wage in Egyptian history, or literally doubling the minimum wage overnight. Uh, for industrial workers and then extending that to uh, to the rest of working uh, the working people in Egypt all these changes altered the fabric of Egyptian society in a way that even when the the experience uh, the experiment was finally defeated things couldn't go back to what they were like and there even though the uh, the people who benefited from the experience uh, especially working class people were disempowered un, uh, under the rule of Sadat and his successor, they still put up a massive fight that you can see almost every year after, uh, after the death of Nasser, the, uh, there would be massive demonstrations, usually uh, in January. And this would culminate at the end on the bread, uh, in the bread riots in, in 1977, where Sadat ends up having to flee, the, uh, to flee Cairo to the safety of Aswan, 
until they can figure out just how massive the reaction to reversing the loss right gains is. Yeah, and I think one of the other success uh, was like the crystallization of the middle class as we know it now in Egypt. Like the, my, the middle class, I mean this class of professionals like doctors, lawyers, uh, engineers, mm -hmm. all, of, all of these professionals. I think it came to the fore during like mm -hmm. Nasser period mm -hmm. and as a result of his developmental policy. So yeah, uh, I think by all means it ends up being a success and we end up seeing a lot of that residual success propping up Egypt up until now.